This video is August 2020's patrons pick. That's right. My patrons over on Patreon voted on this video to get made. So if you're interested in voting for the next one, head on over right now at bit.ly slash STR Patreon to vote and maybe get some other fun goodies. Pokemon, Kaiju, Dragon Ball, and more. It's Steven's Toy Reviews. What's going on today, collectors? It's Steven here, and today we're going to talk about something that NECA should be getting on because they no longer have the Godzilla license, even though there are a couple of folks who know people who know people who may know a bit more about the situation. We're going to effectively go with they lost the license, and there are some Godzilla fans who won't be buying any other NECA product because their taste is kaiju and nothing but that. So NECA, what are you going to do to get those fans to keep buying your stuff? Well, guess what? I have the answer for you. So listen very close. So today we're going to talk about the top five kaiju figures that NECA needs to make to keep those fans coming on back and maybe even get them interested in some of the other figures that they make. So this way they can keep the fans happy and keep them bucks coming in. Just consume Never question. Number five here is kind of a gimme, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see this coming in the next couple months. We have New York Comic Con, or what should be New York Comic Con coming anyway. Thank you, uh, what's going on in the world right now. We have King Kong's T-Rex buddy from the 1933 movie, or probably in this case, a legally non-distinguishable T-Rex. Yep. So this one should definitely happen because their Kong that they made needs a battle buddy because all of the Godzillas that they've made so far don't really scale well with this Kong. And on top of that, they don't really have a companion piece unless you want to get the X plus T-Rex that they made some while back, which is rather expensive. And quite frankly, for most NECA fans, they don't want to spend too much within that price range, which I don't really blame them because that... Mm, X plus T-Rex is a bit old, so yeah, we could use a nice articulated dinosaur to go along with their Kong. Long Kong. I like that. So, NECA, get on a T-Rex now. Number four, and quite frankly, I'm rather surprised that they have not done this yet, given the history of cinema and how impactful this franchise has been. Even outside of cinema, the Tripods from War of the Worlds, dating all the way back to when it was broadcast over radio and everyone thought that the world was ending. Pretty simple in design, they could even, if they do it well, use bendy wires for the legs, they can throw in some extra accessories there, they can even make it light up because the main body, not that difficult to add in some LED features. You can even include a mini Tom Cruise if you wanted to. Tripods from War of the Worlds, maybe even a small alien to go along with them. Look at that. Bing. Bada boom. You got two releases right there that I just gave you. I think that would be pretty awesome. Not only just to get a tripod figure on the market, which I don't think there really is one aside from maybe some smaller scale model kits, which those are models, not figures. Uh, you can do that and you can really get some folks who would like that to buy stuff from you. Plus, you can do repaints and battle damage, which I know you really like to do. So, number four, tripods from War of the Worlds. Number three, not six, three. I'm just using both of my hands because I'm noticing I'm getting my right hand more so in this video than my left hand, so I want to get my left hand in here a bit more. We have Audrey 2. Yeah, this is something that's a little bit different, but I have a strong basis for this one because I think this would be a hot seller. So we obviously have Biolante, which they're not going to be making from the Godzilla license. And recently, Marmot, actually the head guy, I believe it is from Marmot, did a vinyl Audrey 2 figure. And it was kind of quiet, slipped under the radar, but then there were a couple of prominent people in the vinyl kaiju community who started posting pictures of it. And then people were like, where do I get a hold of this? And then once that kind of got out, maybe yours truly managed to also get a hold of one on order and we're waiting for it to ship within the next 10 or so days. Uh, he got from reportedly over 100 orders in two days. And total cost was 
enough. <laughs> Let's just say that. And it's a vinyl figure. So yes, that is in the vinyl kaiju market, which we know is a bit different than the articulated action figure market. But still, there's not a whole lot of merchandise in that area outside of maybe some Funko Pops, which is pretty cool, not gonna lie. Uh, still, Audrey 2, I think that would be a good choice for some kaiju fans because, hey, it's not Biolante, but it could be a fun substitute. I kind of want to take a little bit of a break here to explain something. So far, I've mostly been talking about American Kaiju, and I haven't really talked about any of the other ones that exist in Japan, and there's a specific reason for that. Yes, we do have Marvel's new Ultraman comic that is coming out, or it's already out issue one anyway, and, you know, Gamera is pretty popular as well. Uh, why aren't I talking about those? Pretty straightforward and simple. Gamera, I don't necessarily think would be a humongous over-the-top seller. It could very well be, and I could be wrong there. That's totally fine. Ultraman, well, who knows? Maybe it would be very popular with Marvel. The comic coming out. But what I will say in regards to that is I don't necessarily think NECA needs to head in that direction for a couple of reasons. One, they very much so seem to enjoy North American properties. If you take a look at what they've released so far, aside from Godzilla, it seems like they're mostly sticking with American franchises. So that's mostly in Japan, not really a big interest there. And I, again, could be wrong, and that's okay. And on top of that, you know, for most of what we do have related to that merchandise, we already have some fantastic, amazing releases that have already been represented and pro probably already in your collection if you're watching this. So we have the Ultra Act Ultraman figures, we do have the SH Figure Arts, we have the Monster Arts Gamera stuff, we have the Revel Tech, we have the Bandai Vinyls, the X Plus. So while those would be good choices, quite frankly, I don't think NECA necessarily needs to make those right now because there are so many other things that they could be focusing on, so much uncharted territory that Godzilla fans, Kaiju fans, couldn't get to that point that they've been begging companies for for so many years, and NECA could cash in and then look in those other directions. So that's kind of where I'm coming from with this list, and I think with these next two, you may agree with why number two and number one are there. So speaking of number two, let's go ahead and talk about it. Not that number two. The Redosaurus, the beast of 20,000 fathoms. Do I need to explain any more? Aside from maybe I pronounced that wrong. It's okay if I did. I don't really care one way or another. I know that there was a designer vinyl model kit that was made a few years back, and I know that there was somebody in the community who managed to get their hands on one. Super Toe Remix? I don't know. He, he does something with music, and I don't know. He's a pretty cool guy. I think you should check him out. He's kind of... No, no, no. Anyway, yes, there was a vinyl kit, had a couple of swivels here and there, looked very awesome, but it was not finished, and he stopped making them. So, we need a figure on of this on the market now, because there's pretty much no representation of this in any format, and uh, yeah, we really need that. Dinosaur, spikes on the back, Godzilla, screams it, NECA, do it, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Makes money, sell it for 40 bucks, you're in the clear. Now for number one, gonna be a hot take here, and quite frankly, I imagine that there are going to be plenty of folks who disagree with this. However, it's not necessarily for the design insofar as it's the spirit that made this kaiju come to life, and that, quite frankly, the only piece of merchandise that exists for this kaiju is astronomically stupidly expensive, and it was made by a company who really didn't have much kaiju experience it's 2020? Yeah, yeah, more than a decade ago. And NECA having experience with Kaiju, most specifically Otachi, who has some similar body design to this particular Kaiju, NECA could do it such a wonderful job. Um, yeah, they, they, could, they could and they should do this. Clover. Yep, Clover. So, let me explain why. When Clover was uh, made, there have been reports from J.J. Abrams that the design around it, it came to be because after a trip from Japan, he wanted to make an American Godzilla. There wasn't an American Kaiju, there wasn't a Kaiju that screamed America despite the fact that we have King Kong. Anyway, he wanted to make something we could call our own. From that, there was an ARG, there was plenty of things that went around with that for an expanded universe that even 
Godzilla for the recent MonsterVerse adapted a little bit for the 2014 movie. We didn't really see a whole lot of that for the MonsterVerse after uh, Skull Island, King of the Monsters, but a lot of that was still carried over. Whether or not you do like the monster design, admittedly, NECA could do an amazing job with the figure. We have plenty of accessories right out the gate. We can have an alternate head where the air sacs are puffed out. We have a roaring head sculpt. We have plenty of parasites. We have an in-scale Statue of Liberty head. Who knows what else they can include there. The articulation points pretty much work themselves out. They could do a deluxe figure that's not necessarily super huge like the one Hasbro did that I think was about $100 at retail and new in box. I mean, new in box entirely goes for north of $1,000, I think now. That's insane. So considering that you have the demand there for what already exists on the market that's used and then you get something out there that is a at a more affordable price point, that is going to be pretty much an instant seller. So whether or not you necessarily like Clover, Clover is definitely going to perform well on the market, and I think NECA should consider at least looking at that for a real possibility. It was also, I believe, hinted at by Tamashi Nations at one point, or at least Bluefin. So, get on it. Okie dokie then, so that is going to be my top 5 list of kaiju that NECA need to make into action figure form right now. Again, there's plenty of stuff from the Ultraman franchise, from the Gamera franchise, that they could tackle as well, and very much so. NECA, research and development, do take a look into that. What I would say is the reason why to look at everything else is that with the Universal Monster stuff, which seems something weird is going on with the licensing because you have Mezco doing the silent screamer stuff and hinting at the possibility of other things and it looks like they may have the Ultraman license so I don't know whether or not NECA can get into there and then also with NECA potentially having access to the backlog of Universal Monster stuff they have Kong which they just released Tuni Terror's Nosferatu who knows what else is going to come from that I think we're going to be seeing an ultimate sometime soon who knows my speculation there I think NECA can really hone in on some of the stuff that may be in the public domain and some legally distinct stuff that NECA could definitely corner a section of the market for some of the niche stuff that hasn't been made yet and really put their own spin on it to make it happen. So NECA, you have five examples of things that you can make that really don't have the best representation on the market and you can make some kaiju fans happy. Again, Ultraman, Gamera, they've got product on the market. There are some stuff that don't. That's where you should probably look to get in to bring back those Godzilla collectors to get their money. All right, so that's going to be the end of the video today. And again, this was a patron's pick. So thank you to all the patrons who have helped out for the last month. And we're going to come up here on the YouTube end screen, which I'm just buying a little bit of time because unfortunately the YouTube end screens have not been working for me lately. Uh, I don't quite know why. That's just a YouTube thing. It's been broken and uh, not very fun. So if there's anyone at YouTube who can help me out with that, it'd be greatly appreciated. So um, yeah. Yeah, we'll go from there. All right. Thank you again so much for watching. It's been a pleasure doing this kind of video. Let me know if you want to see more like this and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.